Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you guys how I make my favorite pasta carbonara recipe. And I found this recipe from the New York Times. It's their recipe and this is my all time favorite. And I've done pasta carbonara before where you use like a bunch of eggs, a lot of cream. It's very heavy, decadent, and yummy, but it's a lot of work, it's a lot of time. And this is the most easiest thing you can whip up anytime. And then I'm going to show you a quick little variation on it that I like to do. I like to throw a little twist into my pasta carbonara, but you don't have to. It's optional. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I'm making this today right now. It's my friend's birthday and I'm making this for him. So I hope you enjoy. So first thing, I have a large pot of water with salt. I lightly salted it. I have it over a high heat. I'm waiting for it to come up to a boil. So the ingredients are salt, two large eggs, and two large yolks room temperature. You need one ounce of grated, which is about a third of a cup of grated pecorino romano, and then another ounce of parmesan. And depends what you can get. You can get like the really good stuff, the really good high-end fancy stuff. Or right now, I'm a little broke this week, so I got the stuff from the deli. So I got the already pre-grated pecorino and the um, grated parmesan. But if you can get the better cheese, it makes it, it does make a difference. It's really nice, but it's still really good. So just use what you can get. Coarsely ground black pepper. So I got my little pepper mill right there. Coarsely ground black pepper. You need a tablespoon of olive oil. Three times recipe recommends three and a half ounces of, a, of guanicula, cheta, which is obviously the best and more traditional. I would have to probably get onto the train and go into the city right now because my local Italian deli closed. So I can get that stuff, but it's kind of rainy, gloomy, and I'm lazy, so that's not happening. So I'm using bacon. You can substitute bacon, but if you can get guanicula or pancetta, use that. And then 12 ounces of spaghetti, and this makes about four servings, and it's about 513 calories per serving if you're interested. And I'll link the New York Times recipe below, and it'll have all the nutritional stuff in there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bacon started. Let me weigh it out but I'm gonna eyeball it today. This is my bacon. I got the thick center cut. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. Normally I weigh it out, but it's my friend's birthday and we're not being technical here and I'm not on my diet today, so. About this much. This is, that should do it. I'm cut this in half one more time. I think I might leave the pieces big. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave them big today. You can cut them a little bit finer, but I don't know why. I just want like a nice piece of bacon right now. So, And they shrink up when they cook a little bit. So I'm going to leave them like this today. You can cut them up a little finer if you want. That's fine. And I'm going to put these on a skillet to get started. Alright, so. There it is. It's on the skillet. I have it at a at about a low flame. This recipe is really easy. Let me get rid of the bacon. So I'm going to measure out the cheese in my bowl. So a third of a cup of Romano. And around a third of a cup of the Parm. A little bit more. And then on a the little side dish, I'll put a little bit of pecorino and romano mixed. And then people can add it to their pasta if they want more. So that's the cheese. Now the next step is the eggs. So two whole eggs. And then two egg yolks. <laughs> One yolk. And two and some black pepper. Oh, 
Oh, it smells so good. Freshly grated black pepper. I use powder pepper too if I can't, when I don't have. I just got freshly ground black pepper. I got those pepper mills at Ikea. I got two of them, so I got one with sea salt in it. And then I just flipped over the bacon a little bit, and then all I do is whisk it all together. The heat from the pasta tempers the eggs and cooks them, so they're not raw. And plus, these are pasteurized eggs, so I'm not worried about salmonella or anything that could happen from eating raw eggs, since these are pasteurized. But the sauce gets created from the heat of the pasta. And then you reserve a cup of the pasta water. It's really important to reserve that cup, especially since I'm not using that great cheese. It's really important to reserve a cup of the pasta water, especially since my cheese isn't exactly the best cheese. Because then it smooths it out and creates it into a nice creamy consistency. I've forgotten sometimes to reserve my pasta water and it doesn't quite melt the cheese and it doesn't make it creamy. It's a little granular. It still tastes great, but the texture is a little, it's not the best. So, as a matter of fact, get my little cup and I'm going to put it right on the stove so I remember to grab a cup of pasta water to use. So that's it. This is it. This is the base of your pasta carbonara. That's basically it. And then, what I like to do, that's not in the recipe, I like to add garlic though. <laughs> I add a lot of garlic to my food. So, I'm gonna finally chop up some garlic. This is not in the recipe, it's just optional. I like it, I think it adds flavor. There we go, see? Smack it, palm of your hand, and the skin comes off. And then you can leave this part on, you can take it off. I'm gonna take that piece off because it's kind of big. I'm gonna leave it on this one because it's kind of small so it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna rough chop these real quick. See. My knife skills are not that great. <laughs> Always use a sharp knife. And then the thing, the trick to the knife is like you should hold it like that, kind of like, and you get more control. And then you see, like this part stays here, and I'm only like you pivot, you go like, and you pivot around. together and then again just always use a sharp knife if your knife is dull you need to sharpen it because you will hurt yourself with a dull knife it's more likely to skip on you it'll jump around or something I sharpen my knives about once a season all right so that's right there I'm gonna add to the bacon which is cooking up I'm gonna scoop it up I'm gonna toss it in. See? There's the bacon. Water still not boiling. <laughs> I have a big pot. I use cold water and it's still not boiling. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit. But I can get everything ready. And I really wanna cook the pasta when my friend gets here so it's nice and fresh and hot. And that only takes like what? Friend shows up, I put in pasta. It'll be a dent in about what? About eight minutes. All right, so I'm gonna give it a little twirl. Not a lot of bacon fat. And at this point, what I like to do, which is my little twist on it, I like to add a little green peas. I like the color and I like the freshness of it. So I have frozen green peas. You totally don't have to. I like it. Plus it's like, oh, let's stick a little veggie in it or something, you know? And all my friends like it, and it, it looks nice. So. 
don't know, just a little bit. There we go. I'll give it a quick stir. Pretend it's healthy now because there's a veggie in it, but you totally just leave it out. If you don't want to. I think you can try it with it and see if you like it. It's really good, I can tell you that much. And then, another thing I did I forgot to get at the supermarket, um, lemon zest. If I had a yellow lemon, zest it, and then add the lemon zest to, actually I would add the lemon zest to the cheese and egg mixture. And it gives a nice freshness, like it gives it a little, a little zing, it's really nice. So that's it really. Just gonna let it finish cooking up. And then I'm gonna just leave this aside. until my friends come. So I pretty much have everything ready. I just gotta wait for the so I got water, water to boil. boil. I'm gonna add, I'm doing linguine. I got the whole grain linguine. I like this one because it's um, GMO free verified. You can use any pasta you like. You can use spaghetti, thin spaghetti, angel hair, whatever you like. I even done this with like different pastas like pasta shells and bow ties. Whatever you have. If you don't have, if you have a certain pasta and it's not, just use it. Pasta's pasta. Use whatever you like. And I like the flavor of the whole grain. I know it's weird at first, but it's actually pretty good. So I'll put this in. About water a little quick stir. Let this guy go in there. I'm gonna use most of the box. It's like three fourths of a box. And it should cook up according to the box. Let's see. Seven minutes. So, seven minutes, and I will have al dente. So, I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna put the lid back on so it can um, get back up to a boil. Get in there. There we go. And, and let's that come up for a boil. I'm gonna set my timer. Seven minutes. And over here, as you can see, I already turned off the skillet. That's what that looks like. So, in seven minutes, that's when the magic happens. The timer on my microwave just went off. Turn this off right now, real quick. First thing I'm gonna do is grab a... S that's plenty. One cup of the pasta water. You need that to make the sauce creamy. Like half the time I make this, I totally forget to do it. I'm gonna go drain this over the sink right now. And that's it. Right in there, it's beautiful. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is add this in while it's still nice and hot. See the the only way to really know if it's al dente is to taste it. I wish I have a little center. I don't think you can see it in the camera. It's nice. So I'll pour this in. I'm gonna grab a spoon. Actually, I'm gonna start real quick. And the heat, the residual heat from the pan and the pasta cooks up the sauce. You temper the eggs, which is really important because nobody wants to eat scrambled eggs. If you do this part right, it's the best. You get all of it in there, scrape it up really well. I'm going to add some of the pasta water now. make it creamy. So I'm just adding the whole cup. I think this time I don't need the whole cup. And now I'm going to add in the contents of the pan. All of it goes in there.
we get this out of the sink. So you guys can watch it better. Just in the pot. Give it a quick stir again. It's so easy. And literally, you make this the amount of time it takes to boil, boil water and heat up the pasta. That's all the time you need. You can use fresh pasta. If you use fresh pasta, the cooking time's a lot less. <laughs> it's fogging up my lens. There we go. So that's it. Let me plate a little bit of this up for you guys so you guys can see what it looks like plated. And yeah, if I had a lemon, I would have added in the lemon zest. I would have had the lemon zest inside with the cheese and egg mixture. It would have stirred up. And it really is really good. So let's plate a real quick plate for you guys. You have a nice little piece. She got a little of everything in there. So there it is. I'm going to add a little cheese to it. I made a mixture of the Parm and Romano mix in a little bowl. And then just spoon a little bit over it. Like that. That's pasta carbonara. That's it. And literally, if you don't want to, you leave out the peas, you can in the lemon zest, you can leave out the garlic, but that is the New York Times recipe with my little spin on it. I'm going to give it a little taste. My friend's on his way up. I just buzzed him in. And we're going to celebrate his birthday. Mmm. It's good. It's really good. I hope you guys make this recipe. Be generous with the black pepper, a little fresh black pepper on top. The signature part of a pasta carbonara is the black pepper, freshly grated black pepper. Oh, and stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to show you guys Thanksgiving's coming up and I'm going to show you guys how I make my herb butter turkey and I make stuffing, I make the cranberry, I make everything from scratch, I make it easy, I start that Monday. Make sure your turkey's defrosted that Monday morning or Tuesday at the latest if you start on Tuesday and by Thursday it's stress free all you do is stick it everything in the oven and then you just present it at the table and that's it and you're like a hero and everybody's gonna love you and it's so easy instead of doing everything that day so stay tuned I'll see you guys soon thanks for watching bye